We've got a lot of awesome content coming your way in Tides of Vengeance, in Patch 815 and 825. But if you can believe it, there is something that occurs between 815 and 825. We're going to Nazjatar. Our trip to Nazjatar is the kickoff piece of our next major content update entitled Rise of Ashara. So let's dig right into the continent of Nazjatar. We start here at the south in the aptly named Ship Graveyard. Things don't go so great for our ships. And we'll work our way up north through the beautiful coral and kelp forests. We'll get to see the ruins of Zinashari and some ancient elven architecture, and ultimately make our way to the Naga city that surrounds Ashara's eternal palace. This is the home base of the Naga. This is the seat of power of Queen Ashara, and we will finally face her in combat. So let's talk for a second about the finer points of what you're going to be doing in Nazjatar. First, of course, we've got awesome new major story quests. We're going to head in here and take the fight directly to Ashara herself. We've got new friends to meet along the way. For the Horde, you will be meeting this beleaguered group of former Naga slaves that have been holed up in a cave just barely trying to survive. You will make new friends with a group of Gilblin, Makura, and Sea Giants who will be on our side and help us fight against the Naga. Now for the Alliance, you're going to make friends with a deep sea tribe called the Ankoan that you see here on the right. This group has all but been wiped out by the Naga over the generations and so few of them remain that they know they can never raise their tribe in population again. So those of them that remain have dedicated themselves to spending their life slaying Naga. We're going to help them get revenge. And last but not least, we want to focus heavily in this particular content update on replayable outdoor content. If you liked Suramar, Argus, Timeless Isle, Isle of Thunder, the Molten Front, we're even reaching back to our favorite parts of the Burning Crusade and Akendun's outdoor towers to grasp all those cool pieces of endgame systems and overlay them over the top. Our goal is that over the course of playing through Nazjatar, you've got new things to see every day. Of course, heading down into the depths that are owned by the Naga and Ashara, we will be meeting tons of brand new foes. Some of them have more old gaudy influence than others. Like this guy, Eyeball Jellyfish. I love this guy. And we will also be seeing the, uh, the elite units of the Naga, of Ashara's units, including this powerful new Naga warrior and spellcaster. Along the same lines, we'll be getting brand new rewards. These awesome Naga-themed weapons and armor sets. And of course, new mounts. Now, for those astute mount collectors in the audience, you might notice something a little strange about this crab. The thing you hold on to is facing sideways. The crab walks sideways. <laughs> it's 2018, we did it. And of course, we can't be going to a new zone without some new battle pets. Yes, he is wielding a tiny fork. All of this culminates in an assault on Ashara's eternal palace, the entry of which you can see here with this brand new bioluminescent Naga architecture. Ashara's palace, our headlining raid of this patch, will include eight bosses. We will be investigating a Naga hatchery. For all of those of you that have been interested in seeing how Naga reproduce, now is the time. <laughs> There may even be an underwater boss. <laughs> really can't wait to hear your feedback on that one. <laughs> and of course, culminating with Queen Ashara herself.
It's a very exciting and gorgeous place to go. This place hasn't seen air in thousands of years. For the first time, you're going to get to see things that feel like they were dredged up from the seafloor. But Nazjatar is not the only mystery that we're going to be exploring in Rise of Ashara. We're going to Mechagon. The ancient lost city of the gnomes. We will begin our adventure out here on the Junker Wastes, where, beset by death robots, we will find that this is not a happy place. But we're going to meet some allies here as well. Both the Alliance and the Horde are going to meet friends with a group that is being hunted by these robots and learn a lot of new things about them. Please welcome the Junker Gnomes. Now, the Mecha Gnomes span a variety of different types, and we're going to learn a lot about their culture. The group that we meet out in the Junker Wastes are those that you see here on the right-hand side. They're less mechanical. They're breaking down even a little bit. And what we learn from them is that there is a gorgeous society inside of yet another vault that we'll have to break our way into. And inside there, the higher caste gnomes live, those that have given themselves over to their king, King Mechagon, and his vision to turn everybody into robotic components. In this society, the more robot parts you have, the higher up you go in society. And our group of Junker Gnome friends have decided that just wasn't for them. So we're going to help them break back into their city. Here's a shot of the city right here, and King Mechagon's lightning and shrouded palace up there in the background. We're going to be meeting a bunch of new robot enemies that are on the side of King Mechagon and ultimately taking the fight to Mechagon himself. Now what all of this outdoor questing experience ultimately culminates in is a brand new dungeon, or should I say, a mega dungeon. What's a mega dungeon? Well, if you remember back when we did Karazhan, we did a dungeon that was twice as long with eight bosses that featured King Mechagon himself as the end boss and it's mythic only for now, along with higher item level rewards and brand new and unique pets and mounts and items to collect. This is going to be an awesome double length dungeon. We think you're going to love it. You're going to fight your way all the way out from the Junker Wastes, kill the killer death robots, bust your way inside, make your way down through the trash compactor because, of course, that's how you bust your way into any great well-armored facility and take the fight up to King Mechagon inside his lightning-shrouded palace shown here, where he, of course, is piloting a giant death robot. But what else have we got coming for you in Rise of Ashara? Well, we will continuing, be continuing to tell the major stories of some of our top-tier characters. We're going to be seeing what's next for Sylvanas. What are her plans? If you're a lore hound, you may notice we have a couple of things sprinkled in this talk that you may notice are a little interesting. We'll be seeing what's next for Sarfang, who saw earlier today. And on the Alliance side, Jaina and Anduin continue to be the linchpins of trying to stop Sylvanas' evil plans. And we're going to be checking back in with Magni to see how the whole healing the world thing is going. Spoilers, it's not great. We're going to work with him. It's going to get better. If you like the heritage armors that we showed off in Tides of Vengeance for the dwarves and the blood elves, yes, please, yes, they're awesome. We love doing these awesome lore hits for some of our classic races, so we're going to be doing two more in Rise of Ashara. For the Horde, our ancient allies, the Torrent. You will be going on a spiritual journey with the Spirit Walkers to find out why things are restless in Thunder Bluff. And for the Alliance, we couldn't be going to Mechagon without taking one last check-in with our diminutive friends, the Gnomes. Of course, as a Gnome, you are going to be blasting the heck out of a whole lot of trogs with a spaceship. And if you're a gnomish engineer, you'll notice that for the first time in a while, you get goggles that you can put up on your forehead. <laughs> okay, what else have we got coming in Rise of Ashara? Well, 
Oops, sorry. Can we go to the next one? No? Next one? Technical difficulties? Okay, go back, go back. Back one more. Don't look. Thank you. Oh, we've got more island expeditions coming at you, like Ian was talking about. We've got a lot of great systemic improvements, including a doubloons vendor with pets and mounts and tricorn hats coming in uh, Tides of Vengeance. We'll be continuing to add new island ex expeditions in Rise of Ashara. The first one, which you already saw, if you were a huge lore hound, you were probably wondering where was Crestfall, a Warcraft 2 map that was part of the Kol Tiran group of islands from way back when. This was the island in Warcraft 2 where you very first fought dragons and griffin riders. We're going to be heading back there and you will be seeing some of the remnants of what happened during that fight way back in the day. And on the other side of the spectrum, we're going to a place called Snow Blossom Village. This is a small Pandaren town nestled away in the hills where they've been farming for generations and fighting back against their evil enemies. The Verming are making a return, our awesome rabbit friends from Mists of Pandaria. May even see some Shadow Pan show up too. And in Rise of Ashara, we'll make another advancement to our Warfront system for all those of you that have been wanting to play along with your friends on Warfronts, that have wanted to have a higher difficulty thing to play against, that has large group content when your raid is down for the week, we will be introducing Heroic Warfronts. <laughs> this is 10 plus players. Bring whoever's in your guild and is online at the time. We've got new mechanics, new commanders, and with a higher difficulty and higher item level rewards, you're really gonna have to make sure you head back and defend or you might find yourself on the losing end of a war front. For all those that like PvP, we will be introducing a brand new arena. Amongst the clanking, whizzing gears of Mechagon is Mechagon Arena. And of course, flying is coming back along with it. A whole lot of great new mounts, including the bee, the griffin, and these awesome mechanical parrots. Battle for Azeroth Season 3 will be beginning with a nazjatar themed affix, item level increase across the board, and a new PvP season along the same side. These are the new mounts for the PvP season, these vicious basilisks. And we've got this purple gladiator's proto-drake. So running out of time, let's just do a quick recap of everything coming your way in Rise of Ashara. We've got Nazjatar, the zone, Mechagon, the zone, Ashara's Eternal Palace, Mechagon Mega Dungeon, the Nomentor Heritage Armor sets, brand new islands, heroic war fronts, the Junker Gnome Arena, flying, and BFA Season 3. When is all this coming your way? Well, after 815. But suffice it to say, we're happy with the cadence of content that's coming out, and you'll see the PTR come up soon after 815 launches.